This is the Azir band coming out from EDG here, as well as a Vladimir band from RNG, which means Rise is left open. So let's just quickly touch on the fact that Azir got banned by the team with Scout in it. He's played seven Azir games, it's his most played champion, nearly double his second, and he's only played three champions total. That's a big sign of respect for Xiaohu. And to jump on the back of this with Rise being the priority pick and having that uh, Azir band away, EDG consistently will always prioritize Rise, And that seems fairly obvious because we're so used to seeing banned or picked immediately. But again, the last time these two teams faced, RNG left Rise open multiple games, EDG would pick it, and they would still outmaneuver it. So RNG, like, going into this game, you know that EDG will prioritize that, and RNG have shown in the past that they already have answers. Yeah, but the meta has shifted yes, slightly, that's of course, the so there's not going to be a poppy to outright defuse the Rise during his burst combo. RNG still to respond. Well, let's see what they can respond here with, as the Rise, you know, still 100% picked a band in the summer split of the LPL so far, as we do get Graves and Karma being the choice of lock-ins for the RNG lineup. So I will quickly just touch on the fact that with Sivir being banned by EDG, I really like the first pick support here from RNG. We've called Karma very similar to what Sivir does, yep. being able to speed your whole team up and augment them if they wish to engage. Also needs to be noted then that MLXG threw down the gauntlet. Clear Love does prioritize Graves over Kindred, although Kindred has been played more times uh, by him this current split. But he has both options available, and he chose the Graves. You know, Kindred has been picked and banned 99% of the time in the LPL, so very similar to Rise here. Let's see if it's going to be the pickup for Clear Love. It's still waiting for EDG to pick up their next two champions to respond. Could pick the Kindred here and just continue to hide their hand. Mm. Oh, we're going for actual utility. Well, let's see if they do lock that in, because, you know, we've talked about it a lot. The bottom lane right now for the LPL, very carry oriented. If they lock this in, which they do, means we're going to get a little bit more utility from the EDG lineup, as Ash and Bard are going to be the lock-ins of choice for EDG. Again, uh, for the global audience, Ash really hasn't seen a ton of play in the LPL like she has in other regions. Deft is one of the few AD carries that has picked her up a few times, yep. so... Obviously has experience on the champion. Right now we have long range initiation and pick potential from Bard and Ash. And immediately RNG are going to lock in their next two picks. They pick up Caitlyn here for Uzi, a champion that is time and time again banned out against him as Vicar, Victor sorry, will be the lock in of choice for Xiaohu. Now, so standard control mage in the middle lane, you would assume against the Rise, Victor will do quite well at least in defusing it. I would imagine he will switch to Exhaust as is customary against the Rise. The Ash Bard as well stands out a lot to me. Simply because it looks like EDG are trying to map play RNG through this draft. Well, let's see if they can just set. Uh, uh, EDG, sorry, looking to try and complete. Or just clear love them. Their team composition with their final two picks. Clear Love has done this before. <laughs> Again, Kendrid is available, but he has played Kha'Zix. He played Kha'Zix into a uh, team comp that didn't have a true <laughs> tank. <laughs> I think there was two Kha'Zix in the LPL. One of them was top lane tank, and the other was Clear Love. And only one of them won. I think you can work that out. Well, it is going to be Kha'Zix locked in one more time here for the EDG lineup, as well as Echo, their top lane pick of choice. So when we saw Clear Love take Kha'Zix, it was into a very low CC team composition. I believe it was either... I think it was Vladimir on the enemy team. And effectively, they just didn't have any way to lock him down, yep. so he just ran rampant into the back lines. We have a similar instance in RNG's comp right now, except for now. <laughs> and the final lock-in is going to be the Maokai being played by Looper here. So RNG do find that crowd control that they would need to lock down some of EDG's lineup, but EDG packing a lot of crowd control themselves. Yeah, I mean, EDG have crowd control, but I do want to touch on the fact that RNG is just outright standard. That is a stock standard meta team composition that is incredibly strong with their individual lanes. Top lane can defuse, jungle can fight, mid lane can burst, and their bottom lane can enable and siege with the rest of their team. So that is about as basic as it gets, but it's fundamental and it's always effective. No, completely agree. And on the other side, again, it's just kind of pick potential and assassination potential. So EDG are going to have to be far more reliant on how they play around Vision and really watch out for that big 5v5 Victor Maokai. Well, let's see how this one pans out here because already three very surprising picks. Rise got through pick and ban. Yes, we know how Anji led it through last time round. Klilov is on his Kha'Zix and we're going to see Depth on Ash here. And one more time in the LPL. So interesting team comp for EDG. Very standard coming out from the RNG lineup. And the question will be, do we lane swap or do we 2v2? Well, let's answer that question as we head. And really watch out for that big 5v5 Victor Maokai. Well, let's see how this one pans out here because already three very surprising picks. Rise got through pick and ban. Yes, we know how RNG led it through last time round. Klilov is on his Kha'Zix. And we're going to see Depth on Ash here. 
And one more time in the LPL. So interesting team comp for EDG. Very standard coming out from RNG lineup. And the question will be, do we lane swap or do we 2v2? Well, let's answer that question as we head into Summoner's Rift for game number one between EDG and RNG. in each respective group, there is revenge on the line. Key sword masteries are going to go ahead and pop up on the bottom of your screen. Uh, everything fairly standard. Again, Bl Warlord's Bloodlust on Ash helps compensate for her uh, lack of lifesteal in the itemization, so helping her get through that. There's a Thunderlords on the Kha'Zix, however, and whilst that could be considered standard because it's a damage keystone mastery on I said it was standard because he ran it last time. Yeah, I still <laughs> don't know if I'm fully on board with that. You're a fragile champion who has high burst damage when people are isolated anyway. Strength of the Ages would help out. We also see the Storm Rage Surge coming out from the Rise, something that, you know, changes between Strength of the Ages and Thunderlords from time to time, but it has found to be more commonly the mastery of uh, the Keystone Mastery of Pickup, as we are going to actually see a lane swap coming out from the RNG lineup. Uzi and Mata will get spotted out that ward as they move they'll towards the him. blue side of their a uh, blue side of EDG's jungle. Which means that they'll have to either exit or take this. Well, Mata already go. trying to be a nuisance here. It will be taken away by Cleo, but they get some decent damage down on towards Kha'Zix and Echo. So uh, RNG have a very interesting statistic this where they. This is clever don't actually lane swap that often, um, but they do end up with their bottom lane in the top side of the map 55% of the time, which means that usually they're trying to uh, find a lane swap or, or match it and then just blindly uh, go up to the top lane. You well, we can already see Mako here being a little bit of a nuisance oh, against MLXG. He, he is able to steal it away. Mako takes blue buff from MLXG at level one. Wow. <laughs> Mako giveth and Mako taketh away. That's great. Welcome to Bard at level one, though, ladies and gentlemen. It just goes back to this idea, though, that Mako needs to be uh, mentioned in the same breath as Mata right now. He has really shown himself as kind of the premier support in the LPL in a very stacked lineup. For now, though, we're going to take a look and see where the teams are going to send their champions to. As already, RNG moving Uzi and Mata back down towards the bottom lane to go up against Death to Mako. And this is what we were talking about. RNG will constantly try to blind lane swap because they want to A, disrupt the enemy jungler, push a wave, and then kind of rotate back. And sometimes they can get uh, chipping CS discrepancies. But more importantly, it's so they make sure that they get that 2v2 either way. It's just kind of a, a stock reaction that they have. Yeah, honestly, it's a little bit cheesy for the invade, but it also gives you an early recall edge where you come back with boots or a longsword, depending on how it went. And when you play champions that don't have the tier reliance like the Ezreal, it's usually a great idea to just put that into effect and cause disarray. We can already see Uzi did go back down into that bottom lane with boots immediately. EDG actually send Death and Maker up towards the top side of the map, so they do not want to go into this two-on-two -two lane matchup. Difference, though, will be Ash picked up the Cole versus that boots pick up by Kaelin. Mm -hmm. So let's see how long it's going to take Death to get that one stacking. As Xiaohu here in the mid lane being rather aggressive, trying to push this one out against Scout. Let's go. I'll take a little bit of damage inside of his jungle. He's going to go ahead and recall. We're already starting to see a big discrepancy, though, uh, between the top laners. Looper, 16 to 4 CS, so this Maokai falling behind, especially in experience. And with the duo lane up there alongside Mouse's Echo, oh, wow. there could be a bit of a threat here, which is why Looper is being he so cautious. Mouse just teleported and then cancelled it, because he, I don't know if he either intended it and got told otherwise, but they want to push into a standard lane swap. Mouse almost got himself... I'm not going to say killed, but they would have assumed that the jungler and top laner were there from RNG. He would have blindly put himself into a situation bottom. So now the top laner of EDG just does not have his teleport because he pressed the button at and the that, wrong time. And that's both teleports from EDG now as Scout uses his to get back into the lane against Xiaohu. But EDG are going to go ahead and get some damage down towards the top lane outer turret. 
That's how much she's going to get spotted out one more time. The bottom lane turret's going to get worked on by Uzi and Mata here, so they do not have the help of their jungler or top lane to take this one down, but should be able to take it down nonetheless. But in the end, after this tower trade, the primary benefactor is still going to be EDG because Mouse has such a lead. Yeah. Well, let's see how Mouse can use this lead. We talked about it before this game, Looper, very well known not to pick up gold on the side of the RNG lineup. He's, I believe, 18% of his team's gold share. The sacrifice for the CS advantage that most people will get is the Drake. That will always get taken when you're on the bottom side of the map getting the turret. And like, you got a recall in beforehand, so it helps out. And we can already see RNG working to try and take this one down. It's a Mountain Dragon as well, which is a dragon that RNG do like to focus on taking down sometimes. It's going to be incredibly beneficial to their Caitlyn composition, however. We've seen this a lot. Again, uh, 6.11, so uh, Zerkers have been adjusted Yep. Kind of brought back into line, so there's a lot of siege potential if Uzi wants to go into Zerker's uh, two flat AD items and then immediately into attack speed. On top of that, the next dragon to spawn will be another mountain dragon. So if RNG can start stacking these up, their siege is just going to get out of hand here against EDG's lineup. And kind of an issue is that we have a Rise. Not that Rise doesn't have amazing wave clear, but obviously having to burn uh, his ultimate to do so versus a Victor who's just going to freely laser through. Yeah, there's a couple of questions, though. I'd say that EDG being more skirmish-focused with their drafting. Remember, the Kha'Zix is there. Scout actually gets Chaos Storm dropped on top of him. Does quite a bit of damage there with the Thunder Lord's proc, but that's just going to force him to stay behind the turret for now. I'm really glad that you bring up this idea of uh, a skirmish face or focus composition from EDG. It's funny. EDG, against their previous final, were so good in the 5v5s. In fact, that was the only real time that they bested RNG is when they got all five men piled into there. RNG excel in the skirmish. They excel in the uh, the 3v3, the 2v2, and their composition is pretty much compensated against EDG. They beat us in 5v5 last time. Let's take a stock standard 5v5 composition that has all these other bonuses like sieging on top of it, whereas EDG, I feel like they kind of weaken to themselves unless they really get these, pick these picks going. What they really want, though, they would excel the best but they're just diving EDG. Teleport that. is actually be coming in from Looper here onto Defta Mako. Elmer, she's already on the top side of this map. Blows the flash coming out from Clear Defta. Here, here comes Mako Whoa. jumping in aggressively. Looper now going to go in. But Clear gets so much damage down as Elmer. She takes him down for first blood. That's going to go on over towards Mouse. It's Uzi now taking a lot of damage. Gets taken down by Clear Oh, they're wow. They're not done yet. Scout is up in this lane as well as Mako. Going to take a ton of damage here. EDG cleaning up the RNG lineup. And there we go. They try to uh, skirmish EDG under tower and we immediately immediately punished by EDG finding a beautiful collapse and ripping through them. They gave a lot of notice to EDG. Mouse had his teleport back up available, so that's where things definitely turn around here. Turret's at full health, Mako gets the flash, doesn't stun somehow, but Clear Love can assassinate, and this is where Mouse starts to get these first kills. And everything just unfolds so poorly for RNG. Aggressive decision, usually the right move to dive them when there's only two there. There wasn't two, there was five. They were prepared to fight you. Yeah, great read on that. Likewise, uh, Scout getting involved earlier because Xiaohu was actually coming back from a back, so Victor being unable to follow up. And with that, with those three kills, sorry, being picked up there by EDG, they're already 2,000 gold ahead of the RNG lineup just eight minutes into the game. Should be noted, though, that Mouse was the primary pickup there for a mm -hmm. majority of those kills, now sitting 2-0-1. Oh, and, and again, even though 6.0, 11 has kind of, excuse me, 6.10 has taught us that the AD carry is more of kind of that utility role. We do have an Ash here. We haven't seen many carry oriented top laners, particularly not from these two teams. Mouse in particular is very support heavy. Well, let's take a look at the damage dealt in that last fight. There was Klunilov topping the charts there, did about 1,000 damage. Mouse was very close behind, about 975 damage there. So EDG, top side of the map, and their jungler is able to do quite a bit of work during that small that skirmish. Was a skirmish. Exactly what it is. RNG definitely still want to have 5v5s. They want to set themselves up with Looper on a front line to be a tanky source. But because they teleported, and they were kind of respondent in their movements around the map. There was also a turret blocking them at forced flank situations where Akazix can get isolated damage. And that's exactly where they don't want to be. It can create a really rough situation because now we have a CS discrepancy as well as the bonus gold from the kills on Mouse. Oh, so 48 him. to 22. Whereas uh, Echo is going to start to become a problem in these side lanes. Again, Mouse isn't really known for his split pushing, but the option is there for EDG come mid, come late game if they want to pull the trigger on it. Well, we're heading 10 minutes into this match right now, and EDG, there's still 2,000 gold ahead of the RNG lineup. You know, taking things a little bit slower now. That's Mouse looking to try and get onto Looper in behind this turret here. Power so Victor's rotating. Down. Likewise, MLXG is coming down. 
A lot of pings. Lots of pings going down as Mako tries to steal away the Scuttle Crab. Not quite long enough range to take that one away. He got the blue buff. I think we'll let him off. <laughs> We're still going to see the AD carry to support up, in, up on the top side of the map here. Uzi and Mata already pushing out that wave, and they have been for most of this game so far. And so what Clear Love did there by being on the bottom side of the map is empower his Echo further to be aggressive, and not necessarily just to get a kill, potentially to draw MLXG down and win a 2v2, but ultimately just to give Mouse a point of power in his lane that he should already be winning. That's five stacks on his Dark Seal, a massive CS advantage and kills to boot. He will be leaps and bounds ahead of Looper, and they're just letting that happen. Well, Dragon is going to respawn in about a minute and ten seconds. Going to be the second Dragon, and second Mountain Dragon of the game, especially. It gives us some time to take stock of where things are at at the moment, especially in terms of items. So we look first down towards the bottom lane, where the top lane is up. Both of them picked up their Spectrus Carl's here. You know, I can take a look at Scout as well in the mid lane. He's looking for his Rod of Ages. Does have the components completed, but not the full item just yet. And still has his tier stacking. So EDG, pretty strong right now, especially in terms of items. They know Clear Love's there. We also know that Scout's rotating. He could mm -hmm. get collapsed upon. Here comes Mata. Takes He's a safe route. Just going to go back in towards his side of the map. But here comes a, power, a magical journey, sorry, coming out from Mako. Clear up, trying to jump on top of Uzi. Oh. There goes the tip of fate, coming oh. in, gets dodged out. Any side steps the ultimate there, so EDG really wanted to take down now Uzi they're there. they're in a bad position. Let's oh. see if they can get wrapped around. No, Mouse just put some damage down. Mata, sorry, put some damage down. Okay, what a disaster. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> went a bit pear-shaped, obviously, kind of over through the, or uh, under through the tempered fate. Did get the flash, so that's a fair trade. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, though, Scout going to take a lot of damage from Xiao here, here. Chaos Stone gets put down, puts a lot of damage down in return. And that's why Deft threw the arrow afterwards, knowing that Uzi's flash was down, but Uzi, the ever-mechanical god, uh, with his blue suede shoes, sidesteps it. Dragon has actually respawned here, but both of these teams putting a lot of pressure towards the top side of the map, not opting to try and take down that objective swiftly here. Notice how I said sidestepped Rusty instead of just flat missed. It was a bit of both. I know. <laughs> it was also, like, in terms of even execution, they should have thrown the Tempered Fate before they threw all of the other spells out, and Kha'Zix jumps into it instead. I could read your face. I was trying to sell it, and I was, he was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, for now, we are going to see the teams move more members down towards the bottom side of the map. Xiaohu and Scout still going at it in this mid lane. On top lane, Mako putting a lot of damage down towards Mako's Mata, does get the stun. Scout, uh, sorry, Dev trying to put some damage back down in return. Exhaust going down on towards Uzi, but he's not going anywhere back here. His ultimate teleport. is going to come out. A teleport does get him, come in towards the top lane. It's going to be Mouse coming up to the top side of the map. Looper's going to get here as well. Mouse going to take a lot of damage from this Maokai. Uzi and Mata, you know, not too concerned with battering down the tank. Just farm up the wave. And in the end, everything kind of fizzles out. Uh, Victor was making a rotation there, so Xiaohu trying to get involved on the back half of it. But effectively, both top laners came in just to say, knock it off, bot lane. We're done. Yeah, and the teleport's still pretty cool for a mouse. I was expecting him to cancel it because it was a 1v3, but by being as tanky as he is, he can hold the fort. and They don't lose any turret. They don't even take damage on it. He just sits there and everything goes back to standard, except that we swap where our bottom lanes are because the next Drake is available. Well, you can see at the moment, everything in terms of CS score is dead even between these two teams, except up in the top lane where mouse does has a sizable CS advantage over Looper at the money. This, isn't he? He's 30 CS ahead as Clear Love is trying to take away Blue Buff. He's running. It's a long journey. He's going to move over towards it. We'll be able to pick up his Blue Buff. <laughs> 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 he wanted it. Clear Love probably did too. Uh, now question becomes, without the teleports involved in the bot lane, that means that EDG do kind of sacrifice their one strong point on the map or their one very clear strong point on the map. Mm -hmm. So as we're now focused around this dragon, it's actually fairly even for RNG until those teleports are back available. And well, she's going to give this blue buff on over towards Xiaohu, so Victor picks up his blue buff as well. Mako actually taking a magical journey back towards his side of the map. Gets a couple of wards down on in RNG's territory, sorry. Yeah, that man was Covert Ops. And last time we saw MLXG try and lane gank, they were very much aware of it. And Dept used his Hawk Shot to reveal him this time around. They've got a freeze, so he doesn't need to be here. And if he shows his head on the top side of the map at all, even if... EDG are vigilant in knowing that Clear Love's at red, so MLXG's at red. They have a numbers advantage on the bottom side of the map. They can look to make a play. Well, MLXG has moved towards the top side of the map here. There's Mouse, the one trying to push out the wave quite deep in towards Looper's territory. 
Clean it up, it's down on the bottom side of the map, and you did mention bottom lane is freezing for the EDG lineup. We're out of turret there, it's going to be easier, much easier to freeze it. Uzi does not have flash, we have Tempered Fate and Arrow available as well as the jungler on bottom side. They want Dragon. It could start with a pick unless MLXG again shows himself on a ward and it's just a free 4v5. Ideally, they just arrow mid lane. He does have Cleanse, however, which is very clever from Xiaohu, considering he's doing well in this lane as well with the Cleanse. Got to give him a lot of credit. The mid lane is showing up for RNG. Now things have quite quietened down here between EDG and RNG. Nobody really wants to take down this second Mountain Dragon yet. Pings are going down on towards it. But nobody quite wants it picked up. Oh, it's clear That's going to be a lot of damage being put down on towards the Karthik. Forced to jump and flash out of there. Xiaohu just chunks him out of Summoner's Rift. Yeah, Rusty just gave props to Xiaohu and showing it right there. He's uh, the one lane that's doing fairly even, hasn't fallen behind. Mid lane has been relatively isolated, trying to rotate for his team and just tries to delete Clear Love. Almost successful. You see, LG was looking to try and find him inside of his jungle, get the ultimate off to try and snipe off Clear Love. But with the chunk coming out towards the jungle on EDG's lineup, MLXG and Xiaohu are going to start on the second Mountain Dragon of the game, possibly pick up the second one for their team. Yeah, one of the big pitfalls of the Kha'Zix just there is how fragile he actually is. Scout's trying to zone him off. I think the end result is honestly just a mistake in terms of itemization that we're seeing. And the second Mountain the Dragon Kha'Zix. will fall on over towards RNG here. And the next Dragon to spawn will be another Mountain Dragon. So if RNG can keep this up, that's going to be a lot of damage done to epic monsters and objectives. <laughs> Which means a very uh, early and terrifying Baron for RNG, who are a team who historically have the highest Baron control in the LPL, as well as their siege potential on a Victor Caitlyn composition. You did you have to fight for the next one. Yep. No matter what the circumstances are, they need to get themselves in there. Three is too many of any kind of dragon, so RNG living up to their namesake right now. Well, EDG have been able to naturally grow the gold leaf for themselves again. Uzi is forced to flash away as a temper fate comes out of Mako. Pretty much off of cooldown as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Def does still have the arrow, so that should be noted. Meanwhile, mid. Xiaohu going to take a lot of damage, sorry, from Scout. Pops his ultimate, tries to chunk out the victor. Such is Rise. It's hitting a point now where, whilst Yahoo is doing well in the middle lane, Rise is still a champion that scales. And he's picked up his Rod of Ages as well as his Merc threads there. So, pretty strong right now, Scout. So is the rest of the EDG lineup, although they did lose that dragon. They still have a nice 3,000 gold lead for themselves. Quickly kind of staring back towards Rise and Victor. Obviously, these champions do fairly similar things. Uh, they've got burst, they have AoE splash damage, things like that. Uh, Victor is not nearly as that reliant... That is such a good journey. Yeah, it is. Is not nearly as reliant on flanks as Rise is. Um, so that Flash and especially the Teleport are very important summoners for Scout to be as effective in kind of a, a line of scrimmage set type of team fight. And speaking of teleports, all of them are up at the moment on Summoner's Rift. Mouse and Scout for the EDG lineup as well, and it's Looper on the RNG roster. All have their teleports up and available. You can actually see a small CS deficit growing here down at the bottom lane as Def is 10 CS up ahead of Uzi right now. Which Everywhere. is shocking because Uzi averages 11 plus CS on his uh, opponent. Mm -hmm. And like Rusty mentioned, even the mid lane, slightly going in favor of Scout right now, but the biggest deficit is still up on the top side of the map. That's grown to a 40 CS lead for Mouse. Yeah, and comparatively, it's a finished Icebond Gauntlet. As the mid lane pressure is definitely still going to continue. It'll only get worse from here. Mm -hmm. Kulov also finally finishing a Hex Drinker, not having just the Serrated Dirk, means he can afford to face check Victors and not flash for it. He's finally picked that part of his itemization up, and that was greedy from Kulov. He was trying to snowball off the early skirmishes and lead that he had. He was slightly ahead, but Victor, still a very potent early game threat. Still means he is a full serrated Dirk ahead of Clear Love at the moment. Oh, LMXG, sorry. Dive being set up here from EDG. EDG looking for it. Actually, do get the slowdown on towards MLSG with the Q coming out from Bard. Not able to quite lock him down, though. And the nice thing is by moving Scout that early is that... Uh, Xiaohu cannot follow. Vision control is set up from EDG. They're very oppressive in their control over this jungle, although MLXG with a cheeky ultimate does manage to get that. But it means that Victor's locked down into that lane, and since he doesn't have TP, he cannot follow. So EDG can continue to abuse Fog of War like this. But from the pressure coming out from EDG down to the bottom lane, they're able to take another turret down for themselves. And so then now 2-1 in terms of turrets, they get its RNG. 
Yeah, definitely still looking strong here, EDG. It's just those drakes that are starting to become an ever-present issue for them. And they've been able to grow that gold lead one more time here, now up to 4,000 gold ahead of RNG. Well, it was really RNG just taking a lane swap scenario, putting Looper in a hole, and then trying to take an immediate skirmish fight off of that mm. with a 5v5 composition. So RNG, they're tendency is kind of getting the best of them despite what they drafted for ever-present aggression that's a little bit unbridled you'd have to say that's kind of just something that works for them however remember that they've been only playing against the rest of their group teams that you would have to say are arguably just worse than them plain and simple now they're against someone that can match them with draft and skill well, they're looking to try and tank down Uzi here. Double so teleport's teleport. actually coming in. Def going to try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Caitlyn for now. Might be able to pick up a solo kill there as Def just straight up 1v1s Uzi there. Mouse not even get a, able to get a tick of damage down in the bottom lane. Meanwhile, it's going to be Scout and Xiaohu duking it out in the mid lane. Once again, Ryze able to get the better of that trade. Mako trying to move up towards the top side. Can't quite learn a stun. And more importantly, Def didn't even expend his ultimate in that exchange. That was just straight up auto attack on auto attack. It feel, felt like Uzi just kind of resigned himself to his fate. I mean, you can look at the items there. Def definitely has more base damage at the moment with the Essence River being picked up already, as well as the Zeal. Meanwhile, Uzi sitting on that Runan's Hurricane, the components for his Infinity Edge at the moment. I know that there's reasons for why that 1v1 went in Ash's favor, but we just watched Def 1v1 Uzi. Just let that sink in. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a world we live in. <laughs> a glorious world. Dragon now spawning in one minute. Will be that third Mountain Drake, which means it's ever important that EDG fight for it. Can't afford to give that over to well, RNG. They do have a 4,000 gold lead just 21 minutes into the game. So EDG definitely are in position to try and contest for this next objective. And that definitely reflects in their itemization, in particular their top laner. So we keep going back to Mouse. Has the Iceborne Gauntlet as well as the Spirit Massage, comparatively to Looper's items. We're coming into a big 5v5, and EDG's tank is far more online with a lot more backline threat as well. You look at Looper, he only has the components, like you mentioned, hasn't completed a single major item. So I see how much of a threat he can pose to death in the backlines. I feel like RNG just have to let this one go. For what it's worth, component items are still reasonably relevant because he has magic resistance, armor, and health, all still parts of his kit. It just means that the damage isn't going to be there, so... EDG could out team fight. Mm. Two stuns being put down to Uzi here. They tried to find the damage, but great. only able to chip him down to half health. That's what they want, though, because that means he's half health. He doesn't have life still, and the Drake is up, so that should give them the clean cut objective, knowing that the Caitlyn has to back. If he doesn't back, RNG may look for it. Mouse, they're going to take a little bit of damage here. Three members of RNG try to collapse on top of him. He's going to take tons of damage, forced to try and flash away. Ultimate is going to come out for both the Victor and Uzi. RNG find a pick for themselves. Meanwhile, though, Club's able to take away the Dragon, but slowly RNG trying to collapse on towards the team. Dev, he's been caught out by Looper. They're going to be able to take down the AD carry. He tries to duke out with Marta. Is not able to quite to take him down. It's two kills. Going on over towards Uzi and EDG, although they get the Dragon, lose two of their team members. RNG look for that 5v5 with their composition as well as picking off Mouse, so get a superior team fight for them as well as positioning on mid lane. And now looking for more. MLC trying to jump on top of the bar there, but Scout, he's going to put down his spell rotation onto Grace. Force the quick to round up there. Flash forward there, looking to try and take down Mata. Scout able to obliterate him there. Yeah, very well done from Scout to consolidate what was a poor start to that fight. Mouse didn't even get the ultimate off when it all broke out. And really, EDG just damage controlled as best they could whilst taking out the Drake. That was their goal. Def doesn't get in a magical journey that Clearlove has to jump into to even get out safe. And that was just run away, lose as little as you possibly can and consolidate those losses. But RNG gift them an extra kill on the back end. Mata, whilst he did the most damage in his team in that fight, <laughs> Still pays for it with his life, so took the most as well. You see, Clear Love was not able to even scratch, so much as scratch anyone from the RNG roster as they were on full retreat when Mouse got caught out. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter, mate. Karma just out damaged the entire team. <laughs> <laughs> Mata's champion, we've found it. Speaking of supports who get the most gold, Mata and Mako are tied. Well, let's see if Mako can step up to the plane, because he's, you know, just stolen a blue buff away for now. He has done plenty. How not, dare you? Not, not quite done uh, tons of damage he's in team fights. He's gotten two flashes <laughs> for every single tempered fate. It's pretty good. Yeah, he's two for two. They're just kicking off the wow. Baron. This is risky coming from the EG lineup. They're looking to try and take this one down. They do have one Mountain Dragon, so augmenting some of their damage done to this epic monster. 
They got it down towards half health. Tempefate actually going to come out from making the stop them. LSG has jumped in towards the pit. He gets taken down. Death is able to take him away from the team. But Pluto, he's gone as well. There's no spike, but it's still going to go over towards Scout who takes that down. Uzi now is the target. Magical journey straight on top of Marta. And RG going to lose two of their members. A big chaos saw coming out from Xiaohu. Not quite able to take down Death. It's Mouse now going to be able to lock him down inside of the parallel convergence. Cleanse comes out from the Victor trying to run away as fast as he possibly can. It does look like Looper, though, is now going to be the one that does get caught up. Tries to stun out Scout, who takes a lot of damage here, but Xiaohu still has to run away. Another parallel convergence comes down. Not going to lock him down, but that's enough damage as Mass finds that kill. Looper's going to fall as well, and EDG just found a massive lead off to that fight. They found a Baron and an Ace, and I love the fadeaway hawk shot from Deft as he walks out, but it's like, it's cool, fam. I got you. And so look at where Maokai and Victor are. It's the only reason that this course kicked off in the first place. They know they have that numbers advantage. MLXG just gets absolutely ruined. But for what it's worth, the junglers were dead. So EDG's focus had to be like solely on getting a Baron down. Right through the field goals on yeah. that Caitlyn. And once again, Mako with that magical journey saves his team's skin. Because Deft able to run away whilst the attention shifts. And Mouse with that gold advantage, big item lead. There is nothing that these two damage dealers can do. And a big problem is also the fact that Xiaohu's mana pool is so small right here. Uh, he has cooldowns available, but unfortunately just not the resource pool to put out any more damage. Yeah. And you can see the stickiness of Mouse there, able to stick to Vicar, tank him down with the use of two parallel convergences across that chase from top side to the mid lane. But that's given EDG a massive lead here 25 minutes into the match. 8,000 gold ahead of RNG. And this is a big gold swing without RNG being able to execute on their composition. Again, they're a big 5v5 team, and we've only really seen one 5v5. It's been two skirmishes that have defined this game so far. And that's EDG's team composition that we continue to touch on. Skirmish heavy, it's got the Kha'Zix for isolation, even though he did zero damage. They still cause skirmishes because EDG, uh, RNG's bottom lane was separated on the top side. The rest of the team were running to the pit from the bottom side. If they cause separation, cause disarray, and honestly just confuse RNG's shot calling, they win every single fight. On top of that, they do have the Baron buff right now, so looking to try and increase this already substantial gold lead into EDG's, fav uh, into EDG's favor even more. As Mouse is going to be able to top take down the top lane in a turret, the rest of EDG working to try and take down the bottom lane. Smaker got a very small magical journey away to safety. And we talk about how both Group A and Group B are relatively even right now in terms of power, but to see RNG get just so dismantled in, yes, Game 1 is quite shocking. Mm, they're effectively just being bodied. Yep. Everywhere across the board. Mouse is currently 3-1 against Looper, which is a mismatch. Defto able to sidestep the ultimate coming out of him like she. Is it still looking to try and siege the bottom lane in a turret as Mouse? He doesn't really care about Looper right now, just trying to chunk away at the top lane inhibitor turret. I mean, RNG came back from MSI after a fantastic group stage, obviously falling in semifinals to SKT, but they still looked just as strong in the LPL, mm -hmm. just as dominant. On top of that, they picked up Uzi to their lineup, the superstar AD carry, AD carry formerly from Chaogu, now newbie. Mouse just recalled, so they may look to teleport and force this one. Well, they still have, try and fight. They still do have Baron up minions, and they're able to take down the bottom lane in a turret. So that's a lot of objectives going on over towards EDG's favor. They're taking down every single turret outside of the RNG base. They're six to one in terms of turrets okay. taken too. It's an over 10k gold deficit for RNG. On top of that, next dragon is going to be spawning in six seconds, which will probably be the final elemental dragon of the game, unless EDG take it right off the bat. RNG are not a team that have ever really been known for their team fighting. They do it decently well, but again, they're much more oriented about their skirmish. They play a lot more compositions that empowers that, as the Ocean Drake does fall to EDG. And the concern is here is, yes, there are tools for them to come back. They do have decent wave clear. Um, Caitlyn now has Infinity Edge, already had that hurricane, so you got decent wave clear there. Victor, of course, is still alive. But the stall tactic here, I mean, you're looking at 15 minutes before they can become relevant in 5v5. I'll give them 10. Now we can take a look at the gold leads that have escalated here for both these two teams. You can see every single lane or every single matchup except for the junglers has crossed the thousands of difference here. Only Elmashi and Klinov are close together, but it's still... About 500 gold in favor of the Kha'Zix right now. Can't even give them 10 minutes anymore. There's two Guardian Angels on the mid and top yeah, lane. I was just looking at Ryze's like, items. That's... More of Malmortis for Ash as well. They've just built defensive, and when you're ahead with defensive items, you basically are unkillable. 
Is RNG still getting picked off inside their own jungle here? Mako finds that stun down on towards MLXG, who's desperately trying to clear away this ward. They're but playing a game. Deft. <laughs> oh, sorry, MLXG and Mako are playing a game right now. That's great. Clear my wards, I'll place two more in its place. Well, RNG are still trying to hold on to whatever they can here. Baron is actually going to be respawning in about a minute and 45 seconds. EDG have control over Summoner's Rift right now. Could definitely try and force RNG to move away from their base. We, just, we already saw what Havoc EDG can do when they do pick up the Baron buff. So RNG would most likely want to try and fight them one more time for it. And EDG are showing their hand that they are content right now just to wait for the next Baron. They're just eating up every available resource on the map, taking and clearing out both sides of the jungle. Uh, RNG, they have a very small window where they can sneak over and place down awards. One of their blue trinkets is up, so safety there, but they got one minute. You can actually see how desperate RNG here, RNG are at the moment. I'm actually, actually using his collateral damage to try and take the Gromp on his side of map away from Scout. Gives us some time to look at the items though, as Uzi, you know, does, ha does hit a nice spike for himself with Infinity Edge, Hurricane, and the rapid fire cannon, so he has 70% <laughs> crit chance right now. <laughs> oh You're not meant to do it to your own team, buddy. All of your buffs are mine. <laughs> All of them. It's the enemy jungle, okay? It's well, still his. You know, he just pinged out as well, very nicely, that their red buff is still up and available. Yeah, neutral ground. Mako said, you got, I got theirs, you can have yours, it's fine. <laughs> to be fair, makes I reckon that's quite actually a lot just of sense. what he said. <laughs> double the red buffs on the map. <laughs> it also gives 9% of your health regeneration per 5 seconds and Baron's up. So we've got double red buff down at the bottom lane for the EDG lineup. You can already see Rise. He scouted some massive items right now. Rod of Ages stacking up quite nicely. Void Staff, Ceres Embrace, as oh, well as the Guided online. Angel. He's ready. Whew. It's the GA that's terrifying. Rise was already a pain to deal with. I Almost full item rise, even worse. But we've got 1-4 uh, engaged right now as EDG are looking for a pick. Now remember, Arrow and Tempered Fade are up. Meanwhile, Mouse is in that bottom side applying a massive pressure point. You also have Scout sitting inside of the base here. We'll be stacking the home guards as much as possible, looking to try and see if he can find a teleport flank against the RNG lineup. That pink one is going to stop them from getting vision on towards EDG. RNG have done a really nice job as they moved into this jungle, though, clearing uh. out the wards behind them. So Scout actually doesn't have a great option in terms of TP to get flanking position on RNG. Unless she just was forced to use his ultimate to get out of the Baron pit as he quick drawed in just to get some quick vision. Found nobody from EDG's lineup in there. Don't worry, Mako had red buff. And that health regeneration. They've actually kicked <laughs> it off now though, EDG, and RNG have to respond to this. Well, they're looking to try and collapse here. Meanwhile, Emily, she is going to get caught out by a Scout. Takes a lot of damage. Temper Fate will lock down two. Teleports are coming in. It's a double kill for Scout. Clearlops just jumping all over people as he finds the kill to Xiaohu and still stays alive. Looper is going to be the next member to fall. That's four kills for the EDG lineup. And then move straight towards RNG's base. And that'll clearly be the game. They have the creep wave behind them in terms of the... Oh, never mind. They didn't grab it mid lane. Well, Looks scout. like they're just going to rush over to scout. And they're going to try and take down the bottom lane inhibitor turret. They do have another creep wave falling behind them to try and help with this push. They might try to take it. Again, scout has that GA available, although the... Uh, the tower changes definitely coming into play here. Parallel Converge is going to give Mouse end. a little bit of shield here as the minion wave now oh, going to try can. and meet this turret. First turret is going to fall down. EDG are not stopping. Mako gets taken down by Mata there. So they're going to be able to take down the next Nexus turret. Mata forced to flash away. The Nexus is going to fall here. And EDG in 32 minutes are able to take down RNG in game um, number one. We have to highlight Mako's phenomenal tempered fate play. He force flashes out of Uzi every single time in that last team fight locked Caitlyn as well as Victor up. Uzi was able to do anything. We talked to the strength of the bottom lanes as the 2v2 and how stacked both of these teams are. I didn't see Marta and Uzi in that game. All I saw was Deft and Mako. You know, that was kicked off from that skirmish up in the top lane. EDG pick up three kills and it all started from this. RNG trying to start a fight. EDG returning the favor. They find a 2,000 goldie snowball into 4k and it was just downhill for RNG from here. And this is the thing, when you look at these rosters, you see Mouse versus Looper, Xiaohu versus Scout, EDG replacing their solo laners, and you say, RNG have this. Uzi and Mata, they're enough to compensate, and Deft and Mako, like Rusty said, in game one at least, they just prove that they are the best bottom lane in the world. And you know, Mouse, up in the top lane, had a nice 40 CS deficit for himself. 
We saw Scout doing some absurd things on Rise during that game. But once again, it was all coming down to the bottom lane. One more time, Maker, fantastic temper fates, great magical journeys. Death dealing so much damage, going one-on-one -on -one against Uzi as well, and the Baron just cleaned things up for EDG. It definitely does help that Mouse did get so far ahead that he was able to neutralize Looper. I think that RNG from this point have to go back to the drawing board and get on a composition that allows them to skirmish if they want to be this aggressive early. Yeah, I think it was basically outdrafted by EDG because they built themselves an army that was designed to beat RNG's strength as a team who basically just sculpted themselves a standard team composition. If it got to 5v5 fighting, it feels like the shoe was on the other foot. And because EDG got ahead early, they worked on their strengths and their drafting got ahead. They just became tanks, they were unkillable, and they snowballed out of control. I'm going to even push that a little bit farther, but I do like your analogy, is that both of these teams sculpted compositions on what the other one is strong at. Again, the previous time that EDG and RNG faced, EDG would only win 5v5s and RNG would only win skirmishes. And they just kind of, here, have a 5v5 comp, here, have a skirmish comp. And then you see that final team fight coming out from EDG. And you know, if it rains, it's going to pour because EDG, they found a very small gold leaf for themselves and just snowballed that out of control. It was a very clinical play from the EDG lineup against the likes of RNG, something I didn't really expect. Yeah. It is also an example about how EDG utilized Mouse. So again, Mouse was the primary benefactor of that big uh, dive on the top side, but Mouse wasn't the carry. He was just a distraction, and that's how EDG are working with their new solo laners. Well, EDG were able to take game number